We're both wearing a, a fleece right now. What's that? We're live. Yeah. Redirecting to Facebook Live. Okay. We're live. We're streaming live right now. Okay. Welcome, world. We're streaming live right now. Wow, it took some work, didn't it? Uh, Rabbi Highland Slobotkin, my dear friend, and uh, this is our first, so we uh, had some work to do to, to get all the uh, technology in order, but here we are, finally, live. Amazing. It's amazing. So you and I are not techies, and we both know just enough to get us in trouble. Yes. But I think yeah. we worked it out, and we're broadcasting live to the world. And we want, you know what I want to do? We want to redeem Facebook with all of the garbage that's going out there and all the discussions, all the shaking that's going out there with the media and the high tech companies. We are redeeming Facebook right as we speak. Yes, let's do it. And uh, hey, uh, for those of you out there that are listening, I don't know, I'm not sure uh, who's out there, uh, but if you're out there watching and listening, uh, I'm... Rabbi Stuart Winograd. I'm the uh, co-founder, along with my wife, Chantal, of Reach Initiative International, a Messianic Jewish ministry that's ministering in uh, Israel. Probably you heard of Israel, Belarus, which you may not have heard of, next to Russia, India, and here in North America. And I'm here, as I mentioned, with my dear friend, good brother, Rabbi Hyland Slobotkin, he is the Messianic Rabbi leader of Congregation Beit Tikva in Seattle. Is Seattle still part of the United States, uh, Hyland? Well, you know what, we, we've talked about seceding over here. Now we, not me, myself, but uh, we have a, a crazy mayor, we have a crazy city council, and uh, you know, when the all the riots were going on, the the Chaz, and then the CHOP, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, and then it became the Capitol Hill uh, Occupied Protest, the city council gave the protesters two city blocks of Seattle, basically to do whatever they wanted to do it, and, and they did. And there, there was uh, drugs and rapes and murders. I mean, it, our, it's what our, happens our, when there's lawlessness. Our, and, you know, Relativism always leads to anarchy, and anarchy always leads to chaos. So Seattle's crazy. We don't actually live in Seattle. Thank God we're outside, and we don't need to go in very often. Uh, but we do know what's happening in our area because we do live here. Yeah, well, you know, uh, we want to talk today about embracing the shaking and, you know, one thing I'm sure that God wants to shake through this time of worldwide crisis is uh, we are certainly living in a day where it seems to just be accentuated the words of the prophet Isaiah, where he said that people will call good evil mm. and evil good. And it's amazing. You know, Yeshua said, when you walk in the light, you know what's going on. You have truth. You got you know, righteousness, you got justice, you got love and peace and joy and everything when you walk with Yeshua in the light. But well, when people are walking in darkness and trying to discern and they, they throw God out of the picture and throw God's word out of the picture, we end up with the most unbelievable things where really so often in our modern day, people who don't know the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus, are calling good evil and evil good. And God is looking at all this and he has some real desires, I believe. Uh, and that's why we call this embracing the shaking because we understand that at this time, uh, I remember right at the beginning of this pandemic, I was praying Highland and I was asking the Lord, what are you doing through this? And it wasn't, the question for me wasn't, did you send the COVID-19 plague? Is this a judgment? That wasn't what was interesting to me. That's what, not what I was seeking the Lord for. I wanted to know what he wanted to accomplish because I know God is always seeking to accomplish good. He's seeking to bless human beings, me, you, and everyone else because he loves us. And so 
he, he pointed out a couple of things to me that I, I feel quite confirmed that it was the Lord that showed me these things near the beginning of this pandemic and how it's grown into political crisis and, and mm -hmm. uh, unrest in the streets of America and many other countries. And it comes out of Hebrews 12, and it says that uh, the Lord will shake not only the earth, but the heavens. And then verse 27, it indicates the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Mm -hmm. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. You know, God deals first with his people. He loves all people, but we are uniquely adopted into his family when mm. we accept Yeshua, Jesus as Messiah, Lord and Savior. And so we are uniquely his sons and daughters. We are uniquely his family when we embrace Yeshua. And he always deals with his family first. And when, when he gave me this passage of scripture, I understood that he wanted to shake out of the body of Messiah, the believers, followers of Yeshua. He wanted to shake out sin. He wanted to shake out unbelief. He wanted to shake out compromise and all things that were displeasing to him. And, and I believe that's, that's an important thing that he's doing. And you often speak of Second Chronicles 7, 13, and 14. And maybe you can read that to us because as he shakes, he wants us to do something as we see this sin, this compromise, unbelief, et cetera. And Second Chronicles 7, 13, and 14 points that out, doesn't it, Pilate? Yeah, well, let me just say something before I, I read that scripture. And that is that um, along with this pandemic and along with along with the shaking that's taking place is um, people are uh, depressed, they're in despair, they're confused, they're frustrated, they're angry. Uh, um, people, you know, you've, you've pro I mean, everybody's heard the statistics. There's, there's more depression, uh, more antidepressants are being uh, given than ever before. There's been more suicides than ever before. Uh, suicides amongst millennials are up 30%. I mean, it's very, very sad. Personally, I am aware of three people who have killed themselves in the last seven months. One person I knew personally, the other two were relatives or friends. Actually, it's now four. Heard of another one a couple days ago. Relatives or friends of people I know personally. So it, it's really, I mean, there's a shaking going on. And People are depressed and, and they're, they're, like I say, confused and frustrated. And they're looking at all this stuff going on around them. And it seems like Goliath is growing. You know, we have this, this, this enemy out there that wants to destroy us because we are God's people, wants to destroy the kingdom of God. And the enemy is, is Satan, uh, the devil. And the Goliath is growing. But guess what? We're gathering stones. We're picking up those smooth stones that, that, and just the ones at the right time, only takes one stone aimed at the right place for that Goliath to take him down. And we have the word of God, which is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And that's why when you and I are sharing, our Bibles are open in front of us. So mm -hmm. I, I am going to read Second Chronicles 7, but I just wanted to introduce it with the fact that no matter what comes our way, no matter how much it seems like this Goliath is growing and he's nine feet tall and he's scaring everybody, um, the people of God rise up. We gather yeah, our yeah. stones and uh, we have weapons at our disposal that are designed specifically for the destruction of fortresses, for the tearing down of strongholds. Well, and let that's me add, what, before yeah. you go to Second Chronicles 7, which talks about his people seeking him and repenting, uh, you know, the next thing that God showed me, so the shaking, then the repentance and forgiveness, and then a revival mm -hmm. of the body Amen. of Messiah. Individually, uh, followers of Yeshua getting revived. 
and uh, revived is passionate, hot. And the result of being passionate and hot is that we care, we have compassion for people who are losing hope. We mm -hmm. have compassion for people, uh, greater and greater compassion for people who are, have lost their jobs during this uh, financial crisis, people who have lost loved ones, people who are sick. We have greater compassion and this greater compassion causes us to reach out with love, to lend a helping hand, to pray for these people, to practically serve and to give them good news that there is hope in a God who loves them, who sent Jesus the Messiah to die for them, for us, because we're all sinners. And he died for our sins so that we can have renewed, deep connection with our loving Father, Heavenly Father, and walk in no matter what the circumstances know that we're not alone, that God is with us. And so that's the purpose of the revival. So I often say shaking, repentance, revival, so that love and service and good news can go to the people who people you were mentioning who are losing hope and people who feel like it's better to end their lives and uh, all kinds of difficult and tragic situations. But go ahead, take a look at, uh, let's take a look at we second. We can stop comment. right now, Stuart. I mean, that was the gospel. That's our message. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why we're here. That's what we want people to, to know. We want people to hear. We want to communicate that we do have the answers. Well, not the we. Well, we, ha we have the answers because we know the answer. And his, yeah. and his name is Yeshua. You know, when I was looking for uh, truth, um, when I was on my way to India back in the 70s, uh, looking for, for something to base my life on, uh, a friend of mine asked me uh, why I had sold everything I owned, why I had bought a one-way ticket to London, and why I was going to India. I said, I'm looking for universal truth. And he said, well, what does that mean? I said, I have no idea, but I, I, I'm looking for truth. I didn't know truth would be a person. Mm -hmm. We have the answer, and the answer is a person, and his name is Yeshua. Some yeah. call him Jesus. A lot of people call him Jesus. Um, we like to call him Yeshua because that's his Hebrew name because Yeshua means salvation. It's the proper noun, and in Hebrew, Yeshua is salvation. So, um, this is the message. This is why we're here today. And hopefully, uh, God willing, we'll be doing this again on Wednesdays. Um, uh, we'll figure out the timing. And Five we'll... o'clock. I think we've got the technology down. We can actually do it. Yeah, it's time. It. Hoorah. Hey, right, you, okay. you said here we go. It, and, uh, you know, we, gotta, we are followers of Yeshua, and we cannot live. Uh, for ourselves. We cannot live self-focused and selfish. We need to live uh, in the light of his love and his word, and we need to be reaching out to people with his love and his good news and practical help, like yeah. never before, motivated by compassion. Well, you talked about revival. You know, I, I have a, I really can, how should I put it? I can feel it in my kishkis. I can feel it in my inner being uh, that we're on the verge of something huge, something big. I mean, people have been talking about it for years. The so-called prophets have been talking about it this year, especially, you know, 2020, the year of vision. 2020 didn't turn out the way we had planned when we were not over yet. When we were preaching about it in, in January and February. Um, and some of the some of the so-called prophets are talking about. You know, revival coming. It was supposed to start at Pentecost on Shavuot, uh, uh, 50 days after Passover. It didn't happen, but we see well, things you know, going on. I want to say something very important about that. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Don't understand what revival is. Revival is for the believer, the follower of Yeshua. It brings us back into the state of being where we're in deeper, fuller, more often connection, Kesher with the reviver who lives in us. Amen. And so the reviver in us is seeking to revive every single follower of Yeshua 
every born again person. He's seeking to revive us so that our love for him and our faith is hot and full. And out of revival, then we, we flow out into the highways and the byways, into our neighborhoods, into our universities, into the stores, into the supermarkets, the barbershops, the schools. And this love and passion drives us just like what we saw in the book of Acts. And then God pours out his spirit even more. His spirit's in us, but he pours out his spirit even more. This is what he showed me. Revival of the believers. Then as we go, he pours out his spirit even more. And then there is like just wonders, you know, signs, wonders, miracles, healings. And peop the greatest wonder of all is that the awakening of one's spirit. You know, 42 years ago, I was walking in darkness. They called me up and down stew. And, uh, you know, I was depressed half the time, super high half the time. And then Yeshua came into my life and, mm. uh, and peace and hope came into my life. And uh, that's what people need. And that's why we, the body of Messiah, must be revived in mm. order to be actively bringing that. And then God pours out his spirit. And then people, the same thing that happened to you and to me, you on the way to India, they find universal truth. They find Amen. Yeshua. They find the lover of their souls. And, uh, and that's what people are longing for. No one could love the way Yeshua loves. When Yeshua poured his love out on me 42 years ago, and I was born again, as, as he said, you need to be born again. I felt like he took something broken and dirty and made it new, fresh, and clean. And this love that I experienced from him, experienced, not, it's not an imagination, experienced, like we experienced the sun, the wind. I experienced it. And this love was, I was, I was greatly loved by my mother and father, but this love was multiplied so much larger than the love of my mother yeah. and father. And uh, they really loved us kids, you know, so it's, it's amazing, you know, and this is what we want. We want the body of Messiah revived. We want every individual follower of Yeshua revived, hot, 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 not losing hope, but hot for the Lord and full of hope, full of love. And we want the people who don't yet know his love, whether they're scoffers, doubters, rebels, whatever they are, we want them to know that his hand is not too short to reach them with mercy and compassion and give them fullness of life. Amen. You know, one of the signs of revival, there have been many historic revivals. Um, one of the signs was that those who were revived um, shared their, their revived state, shared their, their revived and renewed joy shared salvation with everyone they came in contact with. It reminded me of a story of a friend of mine uh, who became a pastor. Before he was a pastor, he was hitchhiking in Northern California, and he was a, a new believer. He was a zealot. I mean, a zealot. And he gets picked up by a guy who's wearing those old, uh, those wraparound Ray-Ban sunglasses, you know, and he's got like greased back hair. He's really kind of cool. And um, my friend starts to witness to this guy, right? And, and this guy starts to witness to my friend. So they're both believers, but neither of them believe that the other is really a believer in Jesus. So it turns out this is Moish Rosen picked up okay. my friend, Mark Buckley, and they start winning, and they didn't think either of them were really believers because right. they were like wild hippie guys, uh, Ray Ban glasses. I don't know, but but the, my point is that back, and that was in 1974, I think it was right in the middle of the Jesus movement. The revival was going on, and everybody was sharing their faith with everybody they came in contact with. It was yeah. just one of the one of the. Um, the overflow, the outpouring of revival is people start sharing. And when you start sharing, exactly. people hear, how can they uh, hear unless someone is sent and we're sent and we go and they hear and their faith is built up. And, and that's, you know, 
back in those days, because my wife and I accepted the Lord in 1970, ex actually this Thanksgiving night would be exactly to the day, November 26, 1970, Thanksgiving night, 1970, that we accepted the Lord. And maybe wow. some one day in one of these programs, we can share our testimonies. Uh, mine's kind of wild. <laughs> uh, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear it on uh, one of our Facebook lives. We're planning on doing this every Wednesday for as long as the Lord gives us kind of uh, an anointing and something to say that will be useful to those who are watching and hearing. You know, and what you were saying reminded me that, uh, um, you know, unless someone came into my life to love on me and to share the good news of Yeshua, which I had never heard at the age of 25, it was the first time I heard it at the age of 25, that God loves me and that there was a, a barrier between me and God and it was my sin and that God wanted to get that out of the way and that's why he sent Yeshua the Messiah uh, to die for my sin and he rose from the dead. I had never heard anything like that, but if someone hadn't come to me and loved on me and shared that with me, hey, you know, and that's why what you said is so critical. When we the followers of Yeshua, believers, when we're revived, we care about people's everyday life and their problems. And we care about their relationship with God and their eternal destinies. You know, I do a little test for myself. I call it taking my spiritual temperature. I do it often. When I'm with people or passing by people and I have no concern at all for them, I know I'm already pretty distant. I'm losing mm -hmm. connection with Yeshua. Yeah. Yeah. But when I'm around people and I have compassion and I'm not focused on my goal or buying my tomatoes at the supermarket, but people around me count, and at least that they're getting some kind of compassionate prayer from within me. I mean, mm -hmm. there are people in a grocery store that stand on a line behind me. Do they not exist? I mean, at minimum, my, I feel like if I don't pray for them and the person who's taking my money and packing my groceries, it's mm. like, what am I doing, you know? And often I, I look for a word, something to speak to them that might be encouraging. And I'm not always successful, but it's on my radar. And I understand that if, you know, I'm traveling a road, this is a journey. And if on my journey as I'm traveling and I'm passing people to the left and the right, and I don't have love and compassion and concern for their lives and their eternal destinies, something off, man, I'm not connecting with Yeshua. And well, uh, so I, I, I learned to run back to him. Yeah, well, Stuart, I think that's partly why you and I are doing this together, because we have kindred spirits. And I, you're, you're describing me, wherever I go, I'm looking for some way to connect with someone so that I can find an opening, an opportunity, a word, something to share the good news of Yeshua with them. I was once in, in the local supermarket and I was, you know, I just finished the transaction. She was handing me the receipt and I said to the cashier, um, hey, um, do you believe in prayer? She goes, well, yeah, I think so. And I said, well, how can I pray for you? And she shared this intimate hurt in her life with me. I couldn't stop then. There were people in line. I just said, you know what? I will be praying for you. So it's, uh, you never know what God is using. Now, uh, on a side note, didn't you say you wanted to try and keep these two about half an hour? Yeah. And so we're going to go about another four or five minutes here. And, uh, I just wanted to share this scripture, and uh, it relates to living this life of compassion and love, and it comes from Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, and it is like one of my life scriptures, walking with the Lord now 42 years, and it is really the, uh, the scripture that best defines the ministry of Reach Initiative International in, uh, you know, a number of different countries, India, Belarus, North America, and Israel. And this is it. This is what we seek to live in our own broken and imperfect way. And it's what we seek to model, train for those that are our disciples and our team and our staff. 
It goes like this, Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Messiah loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. And so I understand that this, this, is, this is my goal in life, really, Highland, to be an imitator of Yeshua in my own, you know, I'm weak, but he helps, his grace is there. And to be an imitator of Yeshua in the light of the fact, not that I'm trying to strive to please him, but I'm his dearly loved son as you are and so many are dearly loved children. And out of this, experiencing this amazing love from him, living a life of giving love, sacrificing. Yeshua's lifestyle was a lifestyle of sacrificial service and giving for the benefit of others. And so I seek to live this, don't always succeed, but this is what I'm after day after day, because I want to love just as he's loved me. And his love is, is amazing. It's unconditional, but it's transformational. He loves me like I am. He accepts me as I am, but he's transforming me into better, better character. Oh, yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, and it's it's a sweet smell when we're in fellowship with with the Lord. It's a sweet fragrance. And mm -hmm. ask yourself, you know, I ask myself when I'm around people, am I bringing a stink, you know, like <laughs> rotten fish, or am I bringing a sweet fragrance of life, love, and mm -hmm. hope? And that's what I want to do. Unfortunately, sometimes. I do stink like fish, and that's when I repent and, you know, ask God to help me out and get me on the right track. Well, let me see a few closing words. First of all, we'll have to get the Second Chronicles 7 next week. Next week, <clears throat> next yeah. Wednesday, 5 o'clock. Yeah, but but I want to say that in terms of roses, so I was um, in landscaping gardening for many years, and I learned how to prune roses from a member of the Rose Society. I know roses really well. I know what they need. I know how to grow them. I know how to prune them properly. And uh, all the roses that I buy and plant have a fragrant aroma. I, I know there are roses that don't smell very good and they're beautiful and gorgeous. I personally only want to plant the ones in my garden that have a fragrant aroma. And uh, so all the work it takes to plant the rose, to prune the rose, to fertilize the rose, everything that goes into creating and the working, it's like God has to prune us, you know, the uh, John, is it John 15, the vine and the branches, uh, the pruning that goes on, the same goes for roses, if you don't prune them properly, they don't grow properly, they don't bloom properly and you don't get the fragrant aroma that God wants coming out of us. Yeah, Just I mean, saying. I'm with 100%. And I think that's a great lead in. Uh, I'd like to ask you to uh, pray for those that are listening or, or watching and uh, will watch because we'll have this, the uh, recording of this, we'll have it on, uh, on our Facebook and I believe I, you'll have it on your uh Facebook Reach Initiative and Bet Tikva, and uh, uh, if we can figure out how to do it, but I think we will. And uh, <laughs> we're getting good, Highland, with this technology. And uh, so, anyway, we'll be we'll be with folks. It'll be on our our uh, 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 Facebook pages, but we'll be folk with folks again next Wednesday at uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, we'll look forward to connecting with you. Rabbi Highland, and uh, with everybody who uh, takes some time to be with us. And uh, so if you would just close us uh, with a word of prayer. I, I, there are so many people in the body of Messiah that, that need a refocus. If you would pray for them and also for those that might be listening that don't yet know the love and salvation of Yeshua, maybe uh, oh, yeah. something about that too. Yes, Lord. Lord, so we thank you for this time together. Thank you for Stuart for initiating this and for uh, for putting this together and for his team and his techies. And God, I thank you for the opportunity here to speak your truth and to proclaim your goodness and your fragrance to a dying world. 
may we have that same fragrance in us as we live out the truth. You will be alive and real in us, and especially to those around us, God. We pray for those who need to be revived and refreshed, those who need to return to you and, uh, and to have a, maybe a, a reset in their lives, a, a, a renewing of their walk with you and of their zeal for you. God, I pray that we would uh, restore people to harmony with you, and we would do it through humility and through zeal and through joy. God, that as, as Stuart and I meet on these Wednesday uh, afternoons and evenings, that uh, these messages would go out to a world, not just to believers, but, uh, but also to non-believers and to unbelievers and to pre-believers. God, we pray for a renewing and a revival, and we pray that many would be born again, born from above, uh, that uh, their lives would be an expression of your truth and your love and your fragrance to a dying world. Let it be in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, thank Hallelujah. you again. Hyland, always a delight to be with you and everybody who's uh, listening and watching. Thank you for being with us. And uh, we love you. God loves you much more than we can even imagine. Uh, and uh, you're never alone. Embrace the shaking and know that you're not alone. You're not yeah. alone. God cares. He cares. He really cares. Okay, until next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Quick question. So how do people get to your website if, if they want to watch these? Uh, well, we're Reach Initiative International Facebook. We'll mm. put it out there first. And uh, Bet Tikva, you, you can put it out there if you can figure out how to do it. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll talk sure to you your will. techie person. Okay. And uh, then we'll throw them up on our website, Reach Initiative International website, reachii.org, so uh, people can archive them there too. See the okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Sounds great. So I'm going to end this now. And uh, shalom, everyone, and be blessed. Shalom. God bless you.